back to English for you video series and today I'm here to talk about again about the subjective portion. Do you remember that we were talking about how to get more than 95% marks in your board exams in English? And so in the first video I talked about the objective portion that was part A and uh, we discussed what strategies we can implement to ensure that we get maximum marks in the objective portion. Now today my emphasis is on the subjective portion and we have to see a few things and uh, just there are a few tips that would help you definitely focus better on the preparation and if those tips are implemented correctly you can definitely fetch a very good score in English and that may be taking you quite close to your aim or your dream that is getting around 80% uh, 100% in English that is 80 out of 80 or if I talk about the subjective portion that is almost 40 out of 40. So now let us talk about this thing uh, when we just say the part B which is the subjective portion part B so the questions start from uh, question number 8, then question number 9 is there, then 10 is there, then 11 is there, then 12 and then 13. This is the whole pattern. So from 8 to 13, how many questions do we have? We have 6 questions. And uh, question number 8 is about formal letters. And uh, the second one is analytical paragraph. Analytical paragraph. If we talk about question number 10, there are short answer type or very short answer type questions from literature. So there are four questions, uh, four questions of two marks each, which amounts to eight marks in total. They should be answered in 20 to 30 words. And we would discuss what are the strategies we can uh, apply here. Similarly, when we talk about question number 11, so this, it has four questions again of three marks each. So we are getting 12 marks in total and the answers ha have to be written in 40 to 50 words, 40 to 50 words. Okay. So this is how we have to do under question number 12, we have two long answer type questions one you have to answer okay of five marks so in total you get five marks it should be written in 100 to 120 words okay i'm just describing the whole portion the subjective portion again under question number 13 we have one question of five marks so in total we get five marks and again it has to be answered in 100 to 120 words so this is the description of the entire paper or the entire subjective portion now let us talk about the strategies would we would implement here if we talk about the formal letter so in formal letter the marks are actually uh, divided on the format then there is language and then there is content okay so for format we get one mark for language we get two and the content we get two in total we get five marks the same is also true about this analytical paragraph again format then language and then content format one language two and content two in total five this is the distribution of marks in both the questions they are from the writing portion where you are tested whether you can write letters whether you can write analytical paragraphs okay so you have practiced writing letters for the whole year especially formal letters and you know how to write them you know that on top you put the address of the writer i mean the person writing the letter just below that you put the date below it you put the address of the receiver and after that you put the subject then you put the salutation under the salutation is the body of the letter again the body is divided into three paragraphs in the first paragraph you just tell about the purpose in the second one you describe the whole thing in third one you give the solution or what you want suggestion whatever or what you want 
Uh, okay, and uh, then you, the comes the salutation, uh, sorry, the leave taking, courteous leave taking, and after that the signature is there. This is the whole format. If you even put the format correctly, you are awarded one mark. Okay, if in language you commit few errors, it means minor errors are there which can be ignored, which can be, I mean, uh, it meant uh, pass. Uh, allowed to pass in the, in that case you can easily get 1.5 marks out of 2 and if you are an exceptionally good writer it's not impossible to get even complete 2 marks fine likewise in content if you know what you are writing about if you understand the question it is very important to read the question once or twice or if needed thrice even because if you understand the question so even an average student can write some good content, okay? Even if he just manages, okay, he's not excellent there. So the teacher is not cruel enough not to give him 1.5 out of 2. Generally, they get 1.5 out of 2. And if they write quite in a convincing way, they know what they're writing and how they're writing. So what and how is if clear? And the language is almost error-free. At least, it's not the blunders that's there in the sentences. In that case, two in content, two in language, one in format is definitely possible. So, in letter, five out of five is not impossible. You can get five out of five, but even if you are not so good at writing, at least one you can get out of format, because format you must be knowing then one and a half in language, one and a half in content, so it amounts to four marks. So four can be easily obtained with a bit of hard work, four and a half to five even can be achieved. Fine. This is about the latest. Now, if we talk about analytical paragraph, analytical paragraph is a test of whether you can analyze the data given. It might be in the form of some chart or some graphical representation or uh, likewise table or something. You have to analyze the data, then you have to present it in the form of a paragraph. Generally, what mistake is committed while writing this analytical paragraph, and even I see it in some of the practice papers. Those who are writing the papers for practice, they don't pay attention to these things. They're writing one paragraph. But what I find, and which is quite bizarre, is that there are three paragraphs under one. So please, we have to stay away from these follies. This is just a paragraph, a single paragraph cannot have three paragraphs with it. Yes, it has three areas or three fields which we should pay attention to. The first one is the key sentence or the topical sentence or the introduction, what you call it. Second one is the body of the paragraph where you put the data and you analyze it and then explain it and Third one is the conclusion where you sum up. So these, these are the three things that you definitely incorporate in a paragraph. But you must have to take care that the single paragraph, it cannot have three paragraphs. This is quite abnormal and we have to stay away from it, right? Okay, so again, when you are writing the paragraphs, especially the analytical paragraphs, the same works here. For format, if you know the format, if you put the introduction correctly, if you just put a topical sentence which explains the topic, then if you analyze the facts, the data, and explain it correctly in the body, and if you conclude it, okay, and the conclusion should be in keeping with the introduction. If it is not in keeping with the introduction, you lose marks. Okay, so this is the format, the introduction, the body and the conclusion. If that's correct, you get one mark. For language, there should not be again blunders or glaring errors, glaring mistakes because they cost you marks. If they're not there, you can easily get 1.5 uh, 1 to 2 out of 2. And again, content is quite easy because the data has been given in a very clear manner. Okay, anybody with average wit, average intelligence can easily analyze the whole data and explain what it means and can, can put it in five, six, seven, eight sentences. And I think that amounts to enough number of words. Fine. So it's not difficult. So getting four and half, at least four and excellently done, then five out of five is not impossible or very, very difficult.
So out of 10, you can easily get around eight to nine marks. Eight and a half at least, nine. Even then that's good. We have nothing to complain about. Fine. Now I'm coming to this question, uh, coming to this question number 10. There are four questions. Uh, three, actually two parts, A and B. In part two, there are three questions from first flight. Out of three, you have to answer two. Again, in part B, you have got three questions from footprints without feet. So out of the three, again, you have to answer two questions. Fine. So these, the answers to these questions, or these questions are simply based upon what, how, and why. Either they ask what, or they ask how, or they ask why. Why is more common. So if you have read the chapter well, you can easily answer these questions, just two to three sentences, and that comes to around 20 to 30 words. So if you write them well without committing major errors or serious mistakes, in that case, a out of eight, you can easily get seven to 7.5 out of eight. It's not difficult. You can also get eight marks. Now, let me talk about question number 11, which is a bit different. It has got a better length. 40 to 50 words you have to put into it. So from here, we change the strategy. Okay, uh, just uh, to question number 10, we had different strategy in place. We simply putting two, three sentences about the facts or why or reason or something, you're getting marks. But from question number 11, you have to again structure your answer. Structuring is very, very important. When I talk about a structuring, it means First, you have to read the question. Then just understand what you have to write in the form of an answer. And then give one minute before starting to write the answer. Give one minute to plan out how you are putting the facts in the answer. And here comes the structuring. Means you definitely introduce what you are going to write in the form of the answer. Okay, the, introduc the introduction should not be of the question, it should be of what you are writing as the answer to the question. Fine. So introduction must be there, then a few points explaining the answer, I mean the body of the answer must be there, then it should be ended in a very good way, formal way, giving the conclusion. So from these questions, question number 11, which is of 40 to 50 marks, though this is very small, Still one line can be given for the introduction, two, three lines can be given for the body, and again one line can be given for the conclusion. So for, to achieve better marks, to get more, or to uh, help yourself make your dream come true, getting full marks in English, you should structure these questions. Fine? So what comes under structuring, you put the proper introduction, it means you should introduce, you should talk about what you are going to write in the form of the answer. Okay, then you should also write something in the body. I'm explaining things or giving points, might be one, two, three, four, A, B, C, whatever, whatever way you like. Then you should sum it up. And what you sum it up should be, again, corresponding to or be in keeping with what you write in the introduction. So this is what the structure is. This is what the strategy is. If done properly and just avoiding the major errors, I mean the blunders what I talk about. So out of 12, it means if you get three marks for one, it means two and a half you can easily get. So four questions again. So 10 marks can be obtained. We can go 11 also. And if we are very good at writing, I mean, content is good, language is good. That, that This happens rarely, but it can happen. And it has happened. You can also obtain 12 marks out of 12. So, again, under question number 11, the same pattern is uh, being followed. Part A and Part B there. In Part A, again, three questions from first flight, out of which two you have to answer. And again, part B, you have to answer, you have given three questions from footprints without feet, out of which two you have to answer. So this is how we do it. The most important thing is to avoid major errors or the gross blunders in your sentences. So be a bit, I mean, um, careful about the spelling errors. Be careful about the uh, subject uh, sentence structure errors. You should know which subject and which verb it should be demanding. Fine. 
So if you are good at that, and if you know proper tenses, and if you know the, what the sequence of tenses is, you can easily manage and you can commit few errors. And if the errors one or two are minor, the examiners may be kind enough to ignore them. And uh, he may go ahead giving you full marks, complete marks. Fine. So the practice is the key. The more you practice, read the chapter well, try to understand the theme of the chapter, then just pick a few important questions, especially those ones which have already come in previous board exams, and try to write the answer in your copies. This is the key to writing a good answer, and writing a good answer transforms into full marks or very, very good marks. Excellent one. Fine. And now let us come to the last question number 12 and question number 13. Question number 12 and question number 13 both are generally long answer type questions. And as I told you, you have to write the answer in 120 words around. Okay, and uh, we talked about structuring in question number 11 perhaps. Yes, 40 to 50 word questions they are, answers that you have to write for them. But here, when you are writing 100 to 120 words in the answer, structuring is a must. You must not forget it. Find writing proper introduction. Introduction means you should be able to think thoroughly what you are going to put in the form of the answer. Then what you are going to put in the form of the answer should be introduced also. If you don't introduce, the teacher will not get the idea what you are going to put in all the answer that you have written. And then he is not interested to read it further. He may skip it, giving you average marks. And as a result, you get 10 marks less, 15 marks less from, uh, I mean, the whatever you have imagined getting 80 marks out of 80 but you get end up getting 60 or 65 that's quite disappointing for you all so that brings down the percentage in total and proves sometimes very very i mean bad for you okay so here you have to be very typical about the writing the answers and you should be practiced enough to be able to analyze the answer analyze the question and write the answers in points. CBSC loves points. If you can write the answers in A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever points, is good. You may not be, but it should be well analyzed. The, read, the teacher reading the answer should know that, yeah, this is point number one, this is point number two, and this is point number three, this is point number four, and they are logically linked, coherently linked. If there is no link between point one and you simply jump at point number two, which is not anyway connected to point number one, then the teacher will lose interest. He will not dive deeper. He will not read it further. And again, what you do, you end up getting average marks and that I would not want you to do. So therefore, practice again is the key here. Read the chapter well, understand the theme, pick at least two, three answers, long answer type from each chapter and try to write it. Okay, and the whole practice thing should be finished 10 days before the exams are commencing. Okay, this is the rule because there are other things to do in that period. Fine. So question number 12 and question number 13. Okay, the same strategy applies to both these questions. The only difference is under question number 12, you have got two questions from first flight out of which one you have to answer. And under question number 13, you have got two questions from footprints without feet out of which one you have to answer. Fine. So I'm not going to provide you a magic wand. Your key to success lies in understanding things reading things properly and you must have read somewhere, heard from your teachers that before the writing team time commences, CBSE gives you 15 long minutes to read the question paper. That is not only to read the question paper, that is to understand the questions, to decide which question you know the best and start writing the answers from that very question. It is not necessary to write from beginning to end or maintaining that order.
It is not necessary. You simply decide which question you can write the best, answer the best way and start from there. Just numbering should be correct. So this is important. Fine. Just understanding the questions, planning the answers. Second thing, please make your answer sheet presentable. When I say presentable, it means you should not be writing so beautifully as uh, uh, just I see the letters as they are in print. It's almost not possible. A few people can do it, but it's not possible for many or for most of the people. Therefore, it should be neat and clean writing and easily readable, legible, which is said. There should be as few cut marks as possible. And even if you have to strike up something, please draw one single line across it. Please don't rub your pen thrice or four times or five times or six times. Please don't waste your time coloring the main points and all and then giving the headings and everything. No, please use just the blue pen and please underline the main points in the answers. See, this is the test of writing. And two things the CBC wants to see when they want to see how well you write. The very first thing is how correctly you write it. So when I talk about correction, it is directly related to spelling and grammar. Okay, your spellings will be good if you're a good reader. So be in the practice of reading a lot of books. And the same is correct with grammar too. If you're a good reader, your subconscious automatically picks structures and it picks structures without you knowing about that. And when you go and speak or write that anything, you do it in a proper structure. And uh, that's quite correct. Your syntax is okay. You don't need to do much grammar or read grammatical rules. Fine. So the first thing they want to see is how correctly do you frame your sentences? And the second one is how accurately you do you write? Okay, so it means putting the right words at the right place. That is called accuracy. And if you do the same thing, I mean putting the right words at the right place, you, you say whatever you want to say in a very good way. And that's called accuracy. Okay, so please keep all these points in mind. And I hope if you practice well, just Keep yourself cool, calm and composed. Don't get too excited about anything. This is just an exam, normal exam. If you maintain your calm, even in the examination hall, if you don't know a particular question well, please don't panic. If you maintain your calm, automatically the answer will come to you. If not to the complete extent, 100%, it will come to you 50, 60%. Even that can fetch you some good amount of mark. Suppose out of three, it can get you, uh, fetch you two. Fine, so this is the strategy we have to apply. The first thing, control your mind. Make up your mind to practice a lot. Keep whatever tips I gave you in this video today and keep practicing, okay? This is your key to success. And I know you are going to rock, okay? For a stable mind, for a hardworking person, for a focused mind, nothing is impossible. So I believe in you and I hope you are going to get very good marks in your exams. So see you very soon with the next video. Please, if you like this explanation, do like the video and please do not forget to subscribe my channel. And uh, thank you very much for being with me and bearing uh, with me so patiently for these 20-22 minutes. Thank you very much. Bye.